Sairam, everyone. Sairam. 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 So I will. Um, so we are. We have read a few. Per I think about one chapter at least of the. Uh, Dhyana Vahini. Um, but I thought I will just share a few thoughts, because there have been a few calls to me, uh, individually, from various people. So I thought I will just clarify a few things uh, before we proceed because uh, i think there was a sense uh, among a few that there is a bit of a confusion so i thought i will uh, uh, make a few remarks uh, not that you know they they are uh, that you have to agree with him but you know it will just make things a bit more smoother and focused as we pursue this study circle one of the questions people asked me was, um, uh, you know, there are things which Swami is telling in this Vahini, which we may not be able to do, like uh, sitting in Padmasana, not having a deer skin and things like that. Uh, it is my belief that uh, whatever we have and whatever we are able to do, with that, if we uh, worship Swami, uh, do meditation, I think that will also fructify as long as uh, they are not beyond our uh, uh, ability okay so uh, the thing is that in swami's discourse swami has told hundreds of things are we practicing all of them no but uh, whatever we can practice to that extent if we put it into practice that itself by itself will uh, may give us progress okay i thought that i will make that statement number two is that uh, there are, um, there are, everyone here may have had some knowledge of dhyanam, uh, meditation, which they have learned from um, somewhere, uh, maybe some other teachers, uh, maybe from some books, um, and so on. But uh, if we try to reconcile all those practices with what Swami is teaching, we will get into some confusion. Because there are so many uh, uh, techniques and theories of meditation which has been prevalent. If you try to find validation for those practices in Swami's words, you may not find. Okay, so uh, there's no uh, there's there's no way we can reconcile uh, these varying techniques with what Swami is saying because it can unnecessarily uh, create confusion. One of the th so I think Swami says is, um, if your head is already full, what can I fill you with? Fill you with. Um, you have to empty your head first if I can fill it with some good thoughts. So when we pursue this uh, Dhyana Mahini, uh, whatever we have learned before, uh, I think we should just set it aside for now and just focus and try to understand what Swami is telling us to do. Are we able to understand what Swami is telling? It's a better way to approach it, it's my personal view, because the merits of what Swami is telling can only be um, understood by practicing what Swami is teaching. And so I think that's the second thing. The third point which I wanted to mention is that there are some devotees who said Swami has given other uh, techniques of meditation like uh, Jyoti meditation and so on. Um, from what I understand, um, in uh, 1958 onwards, Initially, when Swami spoke about meditation, the, the meditation which Swami is discussing in in detail is the one which Swami um, uh, taught. However, uh, Swami has also taught other techniques um, in the various discourses or in Balavikas and so on for a variety of different contexts and audience. Because every technique which Swami has taught is valid and will uh, provide some uh, progress. Uh, 
but the thing is, Dhyana uh, Vahini is something which Swami has written in written down in a series in the series of article, and Swami blessed it to be published as a book, and Swami has named it. Uh, so, in my view, um, that's my personal view that this is the one which Swami wants us to learn. But anyone who may not be able to practice it uh, for a variety of reasons, Swami has given other techniques too so that we can control the mind and make it one-pointed. Um, so even among the different techniques which Swami has uh, told in different either discourses or personally to different people, um, there's no way we can sort of reconcile them to Dhyana Vagini. So I, I would suggest that whatever technique um, you all may be practicing uh, or have practiced or have learned, it may be a better idea just to keep it aside for the time being. Um, means I'm not saying don't practice it. Uh, for the purposes of studying this Vahini, it may be better we do not try to reconcile. So what I suggest is that we go through the entire text of Dhyana Vahini. Try to understand what Swami is telling in this book. And at the end of it, maybe uh, we can see, uh, maybe we would have all our questions may have been answered by Swami's uh, Vahini. Um, if not, we can have a session where we can discuss, uh, have an academic discussion if necessary. That will be only at the end of uh, Dhyana Vahini. Um, so I hope you all are okay with this set of ground rules so that we will just focus on studying what Swami has told in this book. Just to understand, um, if anyone wants to practice, yes, you can practice um, whenever and however you would like to, but we will let us uh, make a concerted attempt at studying what Swami has written here. Uh, in those words, um, we'll turn to what we discussed last time. I think Swami is telling that, I think the last paragraph which we read uh, was that uh, Swami is telling our mind, which uh, should not be like a fly, which indiscriminately sits on the sweet meats in a restaurant or in um, in the on the uh, some filthy material on the streets so instead that we should be like a bee which only seeks out honey from the flowers so which basically means don't go after the worldly uh, things in this world which cannot be which can be compared to the filthy things in this world but only seek the feet of the Lord. Um, that's what I think we discussed. And uh, so I will ask Sister Dushi to continue to read. Sairam, look at the other type, the bee. It has contact only with sweetness. It approaches only flowers that possess nectar. It is not attracted to other places. It does not proceed there at all. Similarly, one has to give up all inclination toward sensory attraction, toward the rubbish cart of the untrue and the impermanent. As far as possible, one has to direct the mind to all holy things, which yield sweetness and the joy associated with the Lord. To attain this, time is needed, of course. How long that time will be dependent sorry will be depends on the activities of thought word and deed as well as on the motives that impel those actions thank you very much sister so from this we can see that swami is talking us not only about the meditation time at all times our thoughts words and deeds uh, should dwell on things which are positive um, is what i can take away um, I will open it up for uh, participants to share any thoughts you may have uh, on this, or even uh, if you have some comments about uh, the ground rules which uh, we discussed earlier, uh, you could share your thoughts as well. Saira. I guess if it's okay, Sister Kalyani, you can move the slides so Sister Dushi could read the. Gorge meditation by its inner impact 
the main things to be considered are not what expense one has prayed to the Lord, nor the number of years one has been engaged in it, nor the rules and regulation one has followed, nor even the number of times one has prayed over. The main considerations are with what mind one has prayed, with what degree of patience one has been awaiting the result, with what single-mindedness one has craved godly bliss, regardless of worldly happiness and delay, with no lassitude with, and with constant attention to oneself, one's meditation and one's task. If one examines deeply the success in getting rid of all idea of self, one can oneself gauge the progress made. Instead, if one is engaged in counting the rules and adding up the time spent and the expense incurred, such meditation can belong only to the objective world. It can never come into the subjective and spiritual fields. Thank you very much, sister. Um... I think it's Swami is very in simple language Swami is telling. I think Swami does not want us to look at quantitative, you know, the quantity. Um, but he wants us to look at the quality of the intent, intention with which we are trying to seek the Lord. Um, I will stop here and if anyone would like to share any thoughts, please go ahead. Sorry. So maybe if it is, uh, it's okay that if I don't, maybe there are no questions. So no, everyone feels that. I think there's Swami is saying this. I think one point I think which Swami is uh, said, which I thought we could discuss, uh, which is Swami said there should not be any lassitude. Uh, that we should not neglect. We should not show any lack of enthusiasm. Uh, he wants us to take it up uh, with total enthusiasm. Um, I thought that was something which Swami seems to do, which you know, we, we may we are not be able to maintain our enthusiasm always consistently. Um, whatever else we may do, I think that Swami seems to, and uh, that sort of struck me. I don't know if anyone has anything to answer. Okay, if there's silence, I think we'll proceed to Kalyani to the next uh, slide. If there's anything, we can always come back. Sorry. Sister Dushi. Repetition of God's name and meditation are for acquiring one pointed attention on the Lord, for casting off sensory attachments, and for attaining the joy derived from the basis of all sensory objects. The mind should not be wandering in all directions discriminately like the fly. The fly dwells in the sweet meat shop and runs after the rubbish carts. The fly... We have already done it. Sorry. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. A repetition of God's name. Yeah. I'm sorry. Repetition of God's name and meditation, Japa and Dhyana, should never be judged on mere external standards. They are to be judged by their inner effects. The essence is their relationship to the Atma. The immortal Atmic experience should never be mixed up with low activities of the temporal world. Such activities deserve to be avoided. If room is given for them, and if one sways between impatience and sloth, and if one always worries oneself feeling, why has it not come yet? Why is it still far away? Then it all becomes simply repeating the name and meditation done with intent to gain, with an eye on the fruit thereof. The single foot fruit of repetition of divine names and meditation is this. The conversion of the out-faced into the in-faced 
the turning inward of one's eye, the inward eye seeing the reality of Atmic bliss. For this transformation, one has to be always active and hopeful, regardless of the time taken and the difficulties encountered. One should not count the cost, the time, the trouble, or the trouble. One should await the descent of the Lord's grace. The patient waiting Yes. Sister Bushi, I think you have completed. Patient waiting is its oh sorry. Patient waiting. Waiting is itself part of the austerity, tapas of meditation. Sticking unfalteringly to the vow of the austerity. Thank you very much, sister. So, Swami is again uh, uh, stressing on how what should be our state of mind uh, while we pursue the sadhana. Um, I think the mind it always tends to be very impatient. It wants results quickly, and uh, mind is sometimes the one who uh, sort of kills the enthusiasm we have by you know uh, giving us negative feedback because it is so impatient it will not let us focus uh, like a child you know who is asking have we reached there yet you know and on a journey so i think swami wants us to be uh, attentive to that tendency and avoid it um, so I think I will stop pause here and anyone who would like to share your thoughts as you read these parag uh, paragraphs, Sairam. So Sairam, brother. So the first paragraph, uh, Swami is saying, just control the uh, worldly things and everything and uh, your motivation is supposed to be important. What's the meaning of they have to be judged by their inner effect? So we have to awareness about the inner effects. Can you tell us some examples, if anyone? Thank you. So I will open it up for anyone to comment on this, please. Uh, it's a very nice question brother has asked. Saira. Because no one is uh, speaking. I think in an effect, I will then I will go at it. Um, in an effect, is our state of mind at all times. I guess you know ultimately we cannot look at an external success or in, in a worldly matter and think that we have achieved uh, progress in meditation. But at inside within us, in different troubling, challenging situations, how unruffled we are. I think maybe an indication that you know our sadhana is going well, uh, which no one else in the world will know. Ultimately, it is we who have to measure that. Uh, so that's why Swami says no one else in the world can measure anyone else's progress. Ultimately, it is how uh, calm, unaffected, and happy and joyous a person is. I think the only indicator of any progress in any form of sadhana, including meditation or dhyana or japa. Uh, that's what I understand, brother, but I will ask any other participant here to share, because I'm sure all of you are saying your own way, experiencing some inner uh, success. Um, so please uh, speak up, Saira. So, uh, so thank you, brother. That means how we are, uh, how, what is the effect of the peace and how we are controlling the mind, how the mind is not uh, moving outwards, that's judging ourselves. That's the meaning. That's mm -hmm. what we are, as you explain. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Anyone else would like to please, please uh, say something. Uh, you can even repeat, you know, what you understand in your own words, which will also be just to keep uh, some discussion going, Sarah. 
what do you, brother Arno said, is what I, I too feel it. So, so nothing to say extra now that. So inner peace, inner peace is the, uh, the measuring uh, yard. No? So inner peace and more enthusiastic, more and more enthusiastic. If we are more and more enthusiastic, and the inner peace reigns, that is the indication that uh, we are progressing and it should not be judged mere external standards. So how much time we devoted and what posture we were set, sitting on, uh, so, so on and so on. So, so it may be one or two hours, meditation but there's no peace after that it could be no peace after that sometimes more violent after that one hour no so so it so the inner effects is that peace reigns in the heart so but same thing that i am repeating in a, in a, in a other words as he said thanks that was a good question and brother tasan should be applauded yeah thank you Thank you, brother. Time to time, I think it is good to assess what progress have we have made. We are the best judges of our mind. We can judge how far we have progressed. So uh, it it uh, reflects in your outside outward behavior how calm you are, how yeah. peaceful you are, how you deal with others in a loving manner. These are the things which we can judge ourselves. After doing Japan Dhyana, I think this should bring uh, a kind of, uh, though it is slow, the progress can be um, can be gauged. Thank you, Saira. Thank you very much, Auntie. Thank you. Hi, Ram. This is Sako, Auntie. Yes, Auntie. The next sentence, the immortal atmic experience should never be mixed up with low activities of temporal world such activities deserve to be avoided. Can you give some insight into it? Okay, thank you very much, sister. I think it's a troubling statement for everyone, I guess. But uh, so I will uh, open it up for some discussion, uh, but I would like to hear from others as well. Uh, you know, what, uh, what, is, what do you take from this? And is it practical? Is it needed? You know, things like that. Because everyone has this question, you know, we are, of the, we are living in this world, can we neglect? Can we neglect our duties? Things like that. So I thought uh, it's a good, uh, it's a very practical. Uh, it has practical implications, I guess. So so I think it's good that everyone shares their views, thoughts, the impressions, and what decisions you are making uh, in terms of this statement from Swami Saira. Thank you. Thank you for the question, Auntie. You're welcome. I guess it's silence. I mean, I think talking itself is a lowly activity. I think everyone feels so. <laughs> everyone is avoiding. So, uh, Sairam, brother, that means all the worldly things, we should not mix with uh, our spiritual dhyana. Then it will mix up everything. Suppose if we are going to talk to somebody about my dhyana or some other day-to-day uh, -day worldly thing, we should not bring it with the uh, uh, spiritual activities. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Sairam, uh, I have a different view on this one. Um, on this, uh, the uh, uh, Sakho auntie asked about this uh, uh, question. Uh, in in my view, I think that the uh, it says atmic experience should never be mixed up with the low activities of the temporal world. Even if I experience myself, you know, the, it could be an inner peace or inner happiness. Uh, if I want to show that in you know, the outward, uh, maybe it's these days it is called as life application. Uh, then 
the what is the use of that atmic experience unless otherwise if we are not able to express that one to the uh, to the people they are you know they um, living with us or they are surrounding with us if we won't show that sort of atmic experience then what is the use of that one that is one of my questions the other question um the maybe i have a forgotten the other one may, later i may tell that one but this one the uh, uh even it it shows that it shouldn't be never be you know the, the uh, mixed up with one the then how we would be uh, make use of that atmic experience i know that i understand i thoroughly understand that it's a personal experience we cannot ex uh, compare with other one you know, that person has already reached a very higher level i am in the very low level you know that experience you know i didn't get that experience yana experience light coming into my you know the uh, forehead and i experience enlightenment and this and that uh, the, the yeah the next question is if someone didn't tell me uh, maybe how i would know that you know the at least some sort of guru or someone if if they guided only then only i will think that okay i am going in the in the right direction or you know the towards the enlightenment uh that's the those are the two questions you know the um, you the i am having someone you know if they would be able to explain a bit it would be really appreciated thank you sanira thank you very much sister um I, anyone would like to share your thoughts so please I think Swami, what Swami meant by low activities of the temporal is something material. Just to uh, achieve something, we should not meditate. Meditation is a connection with God for our peace of, peace of mind and for a, go, for a godly matters, uh, for spiritual or atmic experience. We should not be mixing up. We should be avoiding anything to achieve. It's not a prayer. Um, anything to be material gain. Uh, uh, that's what I think. Thank you, Sairam. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you. So, Sairam, brother, when you do the meditation, so we should not think about how many hours we did, how long we are doing that one. So, we have to be patient. When you have patient, your mind is supposed to be clear and perfect. That's what you, are, you have to develop your mind to control. And we should not wait for the time. Uh, it may come in six months, it may come 10 years, but you do your part. And don't compare other people. And don't, uh, even Swami say not to talk to other people how you are developing, because it may bring you down too. So motivation is an important thing. You have to be have uh, faith on that one. You have to develop the faith. Thank you, Saira. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Sairam, anyone else would like to share anything? Okay, if in the absence of anyone, maybe I will. So I will go to Auntie Saku's question. Um, we should not low activities. I think it's always a challenge. You know, if we, if we cannot even completely rule out, I think uh, Swami expects us to cut it down to bare minimum. Uh, bare minimum means that itself is a question which we can ask. What is bare minimum? And generally, um, we all tend to think, you know, if we um, we don't uh, mix with people or we don't engage in activities with others, um, you know, it's not right. It's not nice. But I think the path is spirituality. Uh, once we take that up in a serious way, you know, in this with this world is uh, it has six more than six billion people. If you take our country, it has, uh, I don't know, 23, 30 million people. If you take our uh, city, 
that itself has nearly 2.4 2.5 million people i guess so there are so many people who are who are equipped to take the take the world you know make the keep the world running but um, very few of us are actually even reading what swami is saying uh, so unless somebody seriously learns this art or science of spirituality and gains the knowledge of atma uh, the world will be missing that if no one is willing to for example if somebody uh, for and if uh, there is a uh, tra- so, you know the uh, nasa is planning a trip to mars or something like that or moon um very few astronauts uh, sign up once they sign up they go through a rigorous process until that journey takes place um if somebody is learns to uh, wants to study medicine for 6 7 years you have to study uh, you have to you know go through internship only then you become capable to and licensed to practice as a doctor but during that time the amount of sacrifice a person who takes up a serious study of a serious subject the sacrifices they make and the sacrifices even people around make is phenomenal so if we give at the importance to spiritual progress if we want to say we have want to somehow achieve that atmic state uh, that connection union with god it is a long journey and we have to sacrifice as much as possible the as much time as possible as much effort as possible as much resources as possible and we have to pursue that if we do not pursue um the success will be that much delayed um not even in terms of quantity even in terms of quality this is the reason many rishis in those days they went to the forest they you know they renounced and went to the forest and they tapas then even but the thing is swami says you don't have to run away to the forest but you can live like a rishi even in the, within the world but that doesn't mean living like everyone else we need to say how can we live like a rishi within the society we are not living there to show the other people only to test ourselves whether we are progressing but i think swami wants that level of detachment from the world um so that we can progress in the path of meditation um though in, if at all we are having challenges in progressing even in the qualitative terms because we are not giving our 100% attempt i think that's what swami is trying to say uh, so how much ever we sacrifice that much we will gain from an atmic perspective and until we reach that stage there is no real reason for us to even practice the, you know show it to people or help people because we are not yet in a position just like the doctor who is studying for you know spending at least 6 7 or 8 years to get to a point where they can practice meditation medica you know medicine so same way meditation in, uh, can be taught only by someone who has fully reached a certain level and swami is telling this to only is telling only to the serious seekers who has said okay swami we are signing up for this course we are going to do everything possible please help us until we you know, until we you give us the license we will continue and at that point in time uh, we may be able to be of help to the world but swami is not asking us to run away from the world i think that's what i understand but even within the living in the world uh, swami says hands in the society head in the forest um, so if we, there are things which we have to do just do it without being fully um, pulled down by them is what i understand i hope i i address the question to some extent is not necessarily this is the answer but others also can share whatever you all think sir uh, brother that the, the one of the line the, in the second paragraph uh, the last part one should await the descent of the lord's grace no so uh, that is what we are confused no so there will be confusion always until Uh, until the lord's grace descends so the, the, this is a meditation is a very um, tricky path and uh, um, 
international level of prerequisite uh, pre qualifications and um, so they are uh, the way uh, the sadhya dharma the way we live we, we speak and thought word and deed and so many things are uh, the prerequisite uh, so <clears throat> So, but if, uh, we, if we are really on this path, we have to wait uh, for the Lord's grace to descend. Uh, only then, according to Baba's uh, this paragraph, uh, the other paragraphs, uh, we, will, uh, we will understand whether we, we are on the right path or not now. So our uh, our work has to be sincere. Uh, sincere work has to be done, and uh, we have to patiently wait. It may be years. It may be years or next birth, or we don't know. But we, that is the waiting uh, until the Lord's grace. Uh, uh, descent is austerity. I was saying that it is tabas. So, so that is the thing um, I just wanted to share. Thank yeah, you, thank, thank you very much, brother. Anyone else would like to share, please? Sarah, uh, my small experience because it takes long time. Because first I started meeting a small, small boy. I really, when you go eventually only understand my night food also affecting my meditation in the morning. So the night time I eat late and heavy and make me drowsy in the early morning. So then one day I, I, I don't have a chance to eat. I went to bed that morning and very, very nice, very peaceful in mind and everything. And then I understand this food is bothering me when the too much of eating. Our late eating is burning my morning meditation. And also, um, uh, don't worry about the fruit. And you are, when you are living in the society and you are meditate, you get more points rather than uh, in the forest and do meditation. Because Swami knows we are struggling with a lot of things. And back home in the Sri Lanka, when I was meditating after meditation, when the small noise came, I got so angry. I come out and shout with everybody. Must say you become a Durvasa now. <laughs> what the person of the meditation? But it doesn't matter, it just takes a long time. I uh, after I came to Ghana in the high rise building, my family, everybody, everybody go outside and they meditate. I hear the some one sound like mm, mm, mm. I wondering uh, some microwave or something or oh, oh no, something like that, but I asked somebody else. No, 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 that's the sound your little start hearing something. So you know to worry about that. So your intention is very important and don't worry about that. And sometimes, you know, from in our altar we can meditate. You go in somewhere and park the car and we found the car, you think about your altar. So I mean, pictures come easily because the mind is wandering all that all the places. So when you stay, stay at home, it doesn't focus when you go outside and sit on the car and think about your water picture, it's come easily because it's dependent on that because the mind is always going outside. So it doesn't matter, but just take time. But you you love to meditate, so I will definitely help you, you know, to worry about anything. But eventually you actually achieve. But I still am waiting not to worry about those things, Sarah. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you. Anyone else would like to share anything, please? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to share something that was uh, explained to me. The uh, thing I'd like to share is uh, you have to, as explained in the example of the medical uh, studies, we have to graduate from religion to spirituality. Religion comes first, where we value, um, practice five values. Once we practice five values, we graduate into becoming spiritual. This is something explained to me in few words. 
Sairam. Sairam, Brother Sairam. Anyone else would like to share any thoughts? Um, I guess just a question about the, the low activities of the temporal world. Um, I know you said, you know, we have to try to keep it to an absolute minimum um, in terms of, you know, interaction with other people and maybe things that are not necessary, we don't need to indulge in. Um, but when it comes to just like maintaining friendships and things like that, isn't it, is it also not part of our duty to be there for people who may need us or who may need our support emotionally or things like that? Like um, if we decide, okay, I'm not gonna plan any more meetups with my friends or I'm not gonna call anyone. If they reach out to me, then that's fine. But then they may feel neglected or they may feel like they're not worthy of a friendship or maybe they had they're going through something difficult and they want to speak to somebody but but you don't seem available to them um so i guess uh is there a, a role for for doing that or maintaining some relationship very good question sister um, i think anyone who would like to share any thoughts so sairam brother my small thought do your duty and attach to the only the goals and love other people and and your concentration must be with the god even though you are other activities so we are not asking to avoid all the people or not but in the end nobody's going to come with you even wife or kids or your friends nobody's going to the last stage so keep those in the mind and enjoy the world with the thought of the what is uh, atma is the only permanent one and external one everything's going to be go away one day that's all brother sairam sairam brother thank you anyone else would like to share any thoughts please uh, sairam um I, when he was a small school boy, that from that time also I have a couple of friends. Yeah, and after the smoking, drinking, even though I got it affected, because you are steady, they also know. They also know uh, I can't come to that part. But they say, but they are very good people. But this is a bad habit. But I told them, don't do that, don't do that. But they never come into my. Uh, interrupting my uh, on the way we go somewhere to the movie i stop all the temples and pray so they give me a time to start the prayer thing so that kind of things it doesn't matter what the your focus your study the god knows your mind knows everything come together you have to worry about it. you can talk to them after the talk you cut off you know and stop thinking about that that's it that's all you have to do nothing to worry about it say so, Asylum, brother. Anyone else? Uh, um, I don't know. Yes, sir. Uh, the Telugu um, in, um, uh, translation of Swami is this thing. Amaratva maina atmanu bhavamulanu chudra maina loka vyaparmulato chercha kudadu. Here we have to make the difference. Chudra maina loka vyaparmu is worldly activities. Atmanu bhava is the realization, atmic experience. So these two should not be mixed together. So that's what that line says. Yes, Santi. Yeah, that, uh, now can you... Loka Vyaparam is worldly activities which we all are involved in. The yes. ones when you are on the path of spiritual progress, hmm. it should not be an obstruction to your uh, um, uh, attempts. That's what I, I understand. Is it okay? Yes, Auntie. Yes. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, so, Auntie is basically means any worldly activity. Swami used the word Vyaparamulo, Chudra uh, Maina. So, uh, lowly um, activities, worldly transactions, if you want to put it that way, um, which Swami wants us to avoid. Um, I think uh, if no one else has attempted, maybe I will ask, try to attempt Sister Kalyani's question. So, the thing is, 
we need to help people around there's no uh, second thought about it but when we help we should understand that the help they receive the the real help they need is actually from god uh, but we have a small role to play but we don't we don't need to carry everyone's burden in this world uh, but we have to do as reasonable as possible as to what for example if you're a mother uh, you, if you say um, i am not going to cook and i am going to sit in meditation and think of swami then swami will say that is not meditation you need to be able to see swami has sent a child home and so i am going to feed the child but you are feeding the child not because you are you without you the child will not be fed no you are feeding because god has given you the opportunity to serve him through that so it is a very subtle you know we may still continue to function in the world but with the understanding that he is the boss um i, I the example i can give is in a home there a mother is there and there are three small children they are say one is five year two year one year old something like that the five year old child will think that it is responsible for the other you know siblings and you know they will say okay i'm going to look after you i'm going to feed you and things like that but the mother will laugh mother will say it's good that you're learning responsibility but you know that that child should not feel that the those two younger siblings are you know that you know all the burden of looking after them is on that child no it can still be a good child of the mother and mother says can you lift you know, can you help your brother or sister with that you can definitely help absolutely nothing wrong why are you doing because mother has asked but knowing very well the mother is still looking after so once we have that thought whatever whoever we even if you think your friends they are not really friends swami has put people around you for some interaction which is actually beneficial for them as well as for you if we have that kind of attitude we can function in this world not thinking not deluding without us people are not going to survive in this world uh, without thinking with, without our help those person will come to dogs you know i think god knows you know, if he has uh, plan b if we don't do what we don't do but i think uh, that you know that difference in attitude is the most important uh, because we then we should not say we have to help because they are our friends no so i will say everyone is you know, everyone should be your friend or everyone should not be your friend um, so i think the attitude in our mind is what we have to work on not necessarily the external activities and actions but once we are clear um, we are only serving because god has given me an opportunity to serve so that i can improve i can become like him if with those thoughts we we help or do uh, all the activities in our life then we are still thinking only of god we are not thinking of the person from a worldly sense uh, it's like the five year old child being asked by the mother look after the sibling okay uh, so we are doing it because the mother has asked and the mother will be pleased not because we are the sole responsibility this is what even in i think in the bible Uh, jesus said you are not your brother's keeper you know let the uh, dead bury the dead you know things like that there are in uh, many scriptures in swami swami himself has quoted these are uh, quotations so uh, so i think generally when we engage in the world uh, because if otherwise we will think oh i am not helping that person is going to you know no one is there to look after these are things which we say we should we should help knowing that god is looking after the person Uh, so i think it's a very subtle change that's my understanding but i will open it up for others to discuss as well sir i hope it answered your question sister kalyani uh, it's change of attitude everything in this world is changing our attitude changing the way we look at the world uh, i think that's uh, sir okay i think if uh, I, i think one of the things because uh, what are we waiting for is a question i think uh, was slowly discussed but i was reading the paragraph and i said 
Atmi, the reality of Atmic bliss. We have to realize that Atmic bliss, the state of Atmic bliss, when Atmic bliss descends, nothing in the world, absolutely nothing in the world is supposed to shake us. Um, but until we achieve that, we have not achieved the end goal of uh, meditation is what I think Swami is saying. That's uh, the turning inward of one side, the inward eye seeing the reality of Atmic bliss. For this transformation, for this transformation, one has to be always active and hopeful. So the ultimate goal which we are going to realize is a state of Atmic bliss, which is not dependent on any worldly success, achievement, accomplishments also. I think that's what I understand from reading this paragraph. Um, I'll just again ask participants to share any thoughts you have. And I think we'll wait for about 10, 15 seconds. If there's yeah. none coming, then we'll proceed to the next slide. Saira. Uh, brother, I, I would like to thank Marni Andy for the translation. Because it was a really a confusing sentence, even though you explained, and the, the, there are people who ask this very valid. But uh, now I understand after her uh, translation from Telugu that that uh, immortal atmic experience should never be mixed up with the low activities of the temporal world. I would like to thank her through you. Uh, Sai Ram. Sai Ram. Sai Ram, this is Akwanti again. I want to know the me why Baba is using immortal atmic experience. Can you give me explanation regarding that? Hmm. On the same sentence, the immortal atmic experience. Okay, thank you. Thanks for the question, Auntie. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. I'll ask. Anyone would like to come? Only for the, that word or the sentence? Word. Word. Huh? Only word. Immortal uh, experience. Atmic uh, bliss. Uh, atmic bliss is ne ne never get destroyed. Once we get it, yeah. it is permanent and it is the end of. It is the end of. Uh, there is nothing more than uh there's nothing more than that because even the atma is no meaning the the bliss the atma experience is the is, is the meaning not the the uh, varuna um that Biru, the son of varuna uh, at last found out the bliss the atma experience so and he after that he never returned to his father because he found out that one so the Atmi experience, which is bliss, is the last and the permanent and never, uh, never Adam, destroyed. Yeah. I am not asking that. I am uh, going back to the previous passage, the immortal Atmic experience. Yeah, that's what I am saying. That, yeah. No, that is uh, the immortal Atmic experience. Yeah. Not it's destroyed. Not it's, it's not about bliss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Atmic experience means what actually the, the bliss, blissful state. So it, it will never get destroyed, and it is a permanent thing in the in in this uh, setup in this universe. That's what uh, uh, that's what I get it. Um, thank you. Atman Bhava. Swami says, Yeah. Is Atman Bhava Manu Amaratva It is immortal. Atman Bhava, the experience of Atmic. Atmic experience is immortal. That's what Swami is trying to tell you. Oh. Amaratva Maina Atman Bhava Manu Shudra Maina Loka Vyapara Manu Church Kurdu. Should not mix it up with lower activities of the world. Of course, once when we realize that that is immortal, that Tatmic experience is immortal, yeah. we, can, we can never come back to the, our uh, well, once we get it. Yeah. So, 
thank you very much auntie so thank I you think, very much thank you so immortal in the sense i think as it will once it comes it will never go away no, normal happiness joy will die out after some time we will be happy for some time and then suddenly we will be sad uh, but once you experience the atma uh, that experience will give you bliss that will never can it will never go away mm. and so i think that is the ultimate goal uh, you can call it atmic experience you can call it the atmic bliss so that's the uh, whichever is i think that's the understanding the everlasting bliss so sairam brother it uh, maybe is it our uh, understanding about the discovery of the liberation and uh, 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 liberation from the death and the birth maybe once you realize then uh, you won't go back thank you sairam i don't uh, can i tell a brahum brahus experience was the father asked him to come back and forth he finally even come back to see the father but he is in the bliss like that you know tell the story then they will understand i guess yeah this is sairam brother um just a bit the story i'm just trying to understand one more thing on the discussion um as manyanti said atmic experience is immortal right so when is come to immortal then why swami is talking about never to be mixed up so you became immortal on that experience that is something try to uh, if you see that sentence it doesn't once it comes to immortal why we are talking when then swami is saying about should not be mixed up with low activities because at that stage you don't think about the worldly activity right yes so i think auntie sorry sister what swami is um, so swami is just reemphasizing because generally you know people say we do meditation and then we are back to normal you know things like that swami is talking about a state of mind which he calls meditation which only experience satna the many, many of us think you know no death birth means the body will not die or you know you know there are stories of uh, some people living for thousands of years and all that no one may have seen but these are stories everywhere but the reality is if there if there's no death means once you identify with atma you are never going to die if you identify with the body you are going to die and you will say i am dying the person who identifies with atman will not die okay okay so if you identify with atman you will not say if when, when another body suffers also you will say that atman is not suffering okay, okay so that, thank you so that is what it is so we should understand when it's immortal it is nothing to do with the world nothing to do with the body nothing to do even with the mind you understand that you are the atman as soon as that happens after that you are never going to die and you are never but you are not going to die even if the body falls and dies and it is burned you have not died so that is Thank called ah, okay so it is just that is what it is that's my Thank understanding is not that I have that's good sorry so for yes for clarification atmic experience and the immortal atmic experience it could be two different things whatever we experience time to time temporarily that could be a, maybe a split of atmic experience the immortal atmic experience if we experienced irdi then irdi the we wouldn't even realize or oh, irdi the it has come to us or we wouldn't even care about anything so whatever we all say i have got that experience that is just simply a split of atmic experience for temporarily that's why we are saying that after the meditation or the next day or the 
day after we go back to our original state and uh, feel sufferings and the pain and everything if we got the immortal atmic experience we never ever go back to any other state ex ex except that you the atmic bliss uh, that's my understanding from this one thank you saira saira and sister thank you Anyone else would like to share any thoughts, please? Just in the last sentence, sticking unfalteringly to the vow is the austerity. So is Swami just referring to like maybe like the vow that we make to ourselves or the, our attempt to reach the ultimate goal? Yeah. Anyone else would like to comment on that, please? Uh, I don't know, but uh, I don't know what really what Kalyan is asking. But the meaning here is we have to do austerity, severe tabas for for achieving our goal. Okay, so the, this is one of the tabas, which is one of the tabas. Waiting patiently is also a tabas in addition to other austerities. So the patient waiting is itself a part of austerity. So for meditation, we had to do several uh, things, say food habits, uh, sleep, so, so many things. And this also, you have to add it to that, waiting patiently. So it's people, if they ask him, why has it not come yet? Why is it still far away? So the, 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 this is the, this is not the right way. We are asking why it hasn't come yet. We have to wait patiently. Everything uh, it, it take place in its own time. And uh, so that is also waiting patiently is also one of the austerities to reach this goal of meditation. That's what the line is saying. But I don't know, I am I have answered or not. I don't know the question yet. Yeah. Yes, just uncle. Yeah, just um so I yeah, you think you explained it about how the patient waiting is part of the austerity. Um and then just you see the last line where he's talking about um sticking unfalteringly to the vow. And I was just wondering the vow um is that referring to our own sort of our goal or that we've made this decision to meditate or to do certain things and we have to stick to that oh yeah yes the determination you know it's you can say you you determined to do something mm -hmm. uh, you stick to it yes it be like in a piece or something the vow it could be a uh, piece Something spiritual, I think. I, first, I understood uh, when I read uh, together, uh, I thought that uh, waiting patiently, I, uh, that's what I interpreted first. Waiting patiently is the vow, the sticking unfalteringly to the vow. That means wait, uh, it's the austerity. So, uh, that's what I first understood, but it could be, uh, as others uh, thinking, it could be uh, other meanings too. Other meanings too, as brother explained and others explained. So, uh, in my understanding, maybe he has to focus what is the main goal. So, you should not come out from that one then you have to uh, uh, very strong with the mind. Whatever has happened, you should not give up. So you have to wait for the, that, that particular divinity. So it may take longer time, whatever you said, Brother Sivada, you have to wait for that one. You should not give up. Thank you. Yeah. So this um, 
I think I, I also just want to clarify one of the, you know, the, the why has it not come yet? Why is it still far away? Um, I think the translation, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, we, I think we need to always examine how we are doing. I think that is not what Swami means. Uh, in, if you, if here there are two questions posed, but in the Telugu version, it says, uh, it hasn't come, it hasn't come. You know, you should not be in that state of mind. Okay. But I think we have to always examine whether, you know, we are doing it properly. Uh, so sometimes that, you know, that why question is also needed uh, so that we will clarify and improve how we are doing it. Mm -hmm. But what Swami has mentioned is, oh, it doesn't come, it doesn't come. Uh, you know, you sort of pining for something, saying it doesn't come. Lede, lede, yani, yochin chu, chuntika. Means, uh, in Tamil, there was a, illa, illa, vare, illa, vare, illa, you know, something like, oh, it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. You know, that kind of state of mind is not good. I yeah. hope I clarifies that. Not wavering the mind, no? That's yes, yes. Yeah. Stay yeah. Late fast, the mind always on the ball. So, Sai Ram, so can it be this way? Can we think this way? Any spiritual sadhana, for example, service, must be rendered rendered without expecting anything in return that is yeah. service so similarly meditation is also a spiritual practice which is sadhana we should be do continuously doing it without anything expecting anything so soon in, in return am i right yes yeah. very nice okay thank you Sarah. yeah Then I think we'll proceed to the next paragraph, uh, if it's okay, everyone. The three paths of meditation. There are three ways by which aspirants try to enter the path of meditation. The path of truth, Sattvika Marga. The path of passion and emotion, Rajasika Marga. And the path of ignorance, Tamasika Marga. The pure, serene, sattvic path. On this path, one considers repetition of name and meditation as a duty and suffers any amount of trouble for its sake. One is fully convinced that all this is just an illusion. So one does only good under all conditions and all at all times. One desires only the good of all and is always loving towards all. One spends time uninterruptly in the remembrance and meditation of the Lord. One does not crave even the fruit of repeating the name and meditation. One leaves it all to the Lord. The passionate, restless, rajasic path. Here, one craves the fruit of one's act at every step. If the fruit is not available, then gradually laxity and disgust overpower the spiritual aspirant and repetition of the name and meditation slowly dry up. The ignorant tamasic path. This path is even worse. The Lord will come into the memory only in times of danger or acute suffering or when one is the victim of loss or pain. At such times, such a person prays and vows to arrange the worship, puja, offer this particular food, or build this kind of temple to the Lord. One will be calculating the quantity of poor food placed before the Lord, the tribute offered at his feet, the number of prostrations performed, and the number of times the shrine was circled, and ask for proportionate awards. For those who adopt this attitude in meditation, the mind and intellect can never be pure. Sorry, everyone. I don't think uh, much is needed by way of me saying anything. Uh, Swami has very clearly stated, you know, we you perform all sorts of sadhana. And I think we can evaluate in which category are we falling. Um, and then uh, we will, you know, appropriately modify it so that it 
um, gets into the sattvic mode of sadhana. Uh, it can be anything. So Swami is applying that here for meditation also. And he's just because people are doing meditation, uh, you know, because what happens is in generally today, people are after, you know, if I meditate for 10, you know, uh, when will I start hearing the sound of uh, bells, uh, you know, suddenly some smell, you know, all sorts of things. And people will tell others, you know, I have time hearing this, you know, all that. Because that is the tendency, because we are looking for some, um, you know, mile post. You know, we have reached this stage. Okay, now we are from here, we are going to go. And Swami is categorizing it as Rajasika, you know, even if that kind of thing. Um, so Swami wants us to just, just do it. Don't think, you know, what will happen. Uh, you know, it just, uh, so he is just laying it out for us. So we learn, uh, we learn what is the best way to do meditation. So I will pause here and I will open it up for discussion. Saira. Sairam, up until now, I thought only the very first one, it goes under the classification, it goes under the meditation. Other two categories, I thought it's either it goes under the rituals, puja and those things, or in another category. Today only I learned that mm -hmm. there are three different types of uh, meditation, Swami you beautifully laid out these three things and uh, up until today i thought only one category that is the very first one other two you know, it's it's i i truly thought that those two go go under the rituals maybe someone else may would have already known that these two also maybe under the meditation type of meditation but i never knew that uh, those two those two also goes under the meditation thank you sisters anyone else would like to share any thought please sana brother um, based on ananthi's uh, thing it's not categorized right mm -hmm. this is some your state of mind yeah. how you do your meditation that's supposed to be clear here no? i think yeah that's it I, I say i echo the same thing because there are three ways by which as parents try to enter the path of meditation yes that's not not, not the not the categories of meditation enter the path of meditation so so the first category people the, at the last sentence in the first paragraph one does not crave even the fruit of repeating the name and meditation one leaves it all to the lord that that is the the, the thing so in other kind of two yeah this is in general uh, attitude is displayed here yeah this so so, so that means so swami divided into three categories how the people oh, oh, enter the path, no entering path. Entering no. path. One is the, the state of a mind, whatever sister said, I think. Oh. So, so the sattvic or so, rajas so, or so, tamas. Brother, use the word path. I think categories is troubling everyone. So, okay. Swami has used the word path. So, path. let's use the word path. Yes. Okay, the path, the sattvic is whatever the problems you have going through, doesn't matter. You will you will meditate on the thing it may come five years or ten years your goal you you you, you try to achieve the goal Rajas so I mean okay i did it for two years nothing must happen then your mind will go down then you will failure on that one when you yeah. go to thomas yeah it's a it's a uh, that's the worst one so whenever any problems come in your lifetime then you decided to do that one that is not going to work it's like a bribing the god Okay, I have the problem. I'm going to do this one. I'm going to build the house. I'm going to build the temple. I'm going to do the charity and everything. That is not going to work. So, Sattvic is the best one. You can achieve the goal. That's the only one. Thank you, Sairam. Thank you. Sairam, uh, in this case, I think 
people who are by meditating they have to reach the level to the uh, the pure and serene the sattvic part the mm, tamastic rajastic is a, these are the people's state of mind but at the end they have to come to the sattvic to um, attain the benefit of the meditation that uh, bliss of atmic that's mm -hmm. the way i am looking at these uh, three things thank you sairam yeah. sairam uh, i to my knowledge uh, swami says that the mind needs rest to realize its ability so in meditation the mind is set to silent mode so that is you are awake and you are giving the mind freedom from thoughts sairam mm. thank you thank you anyone else would like to share hello sairam yes, yes. sairam i have a question on the bhakti if uh, i may allow to go ahead can you ask the question sister but we please ask you we'll see can i go ahead with the question of bhakti yes uh, please okay uh, so far like i heard or i know is one bhakti is like, like a dasatva bhakti and another one is prem lakshana bhakti the difference between two and of course i think bhakti is a bhakti no nothing can be better than one but even then uh, i would like to know it's okay sister i think it's a good question but what we will do is you know we have a session the last weekend of november when we will be addressing those questions okay, um, so i think we will address with that the last mm -hmm. uh, sunday of november we will have and we will keep this question for discussion because it's sort of it's related and not related so if you don't mind then we will pause no, it no, it's, okay. it's okay and about this meditation i read in one of this um, sai harmony because i keep on reading different different so i don't remember so they said meditation the first one repeating of the name repetition of the name or uh, nama japa is a contemplation the middle one i don't remember but the last one when you just think of swami or just swami's name is mentioned he comes in front of you that's a meditation thank you thank you sister not thank you about asking you oh you oh, said i thought you we, i thought you answered your question no, so i read I, it so i would yeah. like to know what you say okay i don't know if the others have anything to say <laughs> anyone would like to share something maybe i will you know i think this three path and categories are just uh, see what from what i can read see swami earlier on swami spoke about the mind only dwelling on the atmic aspects and not the worldly aspects the tamasic and rajasic are reflections of our mind being engrossed in the world um because that is where you would start this measuring progress or you know something happened in the material world you want some remedy uh, that is the way most people or most sadhakas are pursuing any form of sadhana uh, whether we like it or not that is that's where we start no one straight away starts enters into the sattvic path but the person so then i thought they will uh, um, so i hope i answered that your question sister um, so now i will come to that question see uh, the first part the swami says the sattvic path the, the sadhaka is not waiting for the result uh, that's what he says he does not even crave for the fruit why does he not crave for the fruit means the fruit for him is the being able to think of the lord as soon as he thinks of the lord he thinks everything is achieved there is nothing more to be achieved so a person who is in that path he will always pray to the lord only for one thing lord please grant me the blessing that i will always think of you even if i have to take a next word i want to be thinking of you because for him in this world or in the next world there is nothing greater than thinking of the lord and thinking of his name that is the fruit by itself that is the goal by itself so that sat person 
whenever he chants he is he is chanting in the state of happiness oh at last i have realized it now there's nothing more better than this in this world so each time the name is chanted the person goes into bliss and continuously chants means he will be in continuous state of bliss so that is a real fruit so that is why that person is not waiting for anything else because others may say okay if i pray maybe i will all my financial difficulties will go away or maybe you know my health will improve you know something or even mental peace actually sathik path even his mental is trouble is not worried about that he will say the mind you can worry about yourself i am very happy because i am able to think of the lord so that the, the fruit itself is uh, as sister kusuma asked as soon as you think of the lord you are with the lord the lord is with you what is your like this life you only like need the lord sorry like you are in a bliss saira like thinking of lord like suddenly you feel in bliss that's the ultimate right there's nothing more whether in this world or in the outside world or in swarga or in kaivalya nothing so the devotee is thinking i am just happy to think of the lord there's nothing okay. more see once you have the lord you don't need anything and if you able to think of the lord the lord is yours and you are with the lord that is why he is not waiting for something else in that state of mind you will continue to think of the lord so that is the ultimate sattvic path Uh, so if you know if they fall ill they were not worried if they become poor they are not worried if people beat them up they are not worried people you know uh, chop their limbs they are not worried because they are fully engrossed in the thought of god and know that this is the ultimate in this world um even then for that they, that's we say as soon as you know how the taste of the name the taste the the joy of looking at the form that's why both name and form the na- form is meditated upon the name is uh, chanted said uh, if this na- because this entire world is anyway name and form nama roopa okay so if you only take god's name and if you only take god's form there's nothing more of any value in this world or in the next world that is why that uh, that is total meditation uh, continuous meditation and i think that's what swami is trying to push us towards uh, so that's why i understand but that's a path separate we don't necessarily when we enter we cannot enter straight away uh, generally uh, generally that's my understanding saira saira thank you thank you saira saira yeah yeah Uh, Sairam brother. brother, go ahead, go ahead. Sairam brother, you, you truly explained that that is 100% right way path. You told that if you get God yourself, nothing else can come across that uh, path, and this is a last, everlasting uh, bliss. Thank you, Sairam brother. Sairam, Sairam, this is Aku Aunty. Yes, Aunty. Okay, is this can this path be uh, um, connected to gopikas in yes. brindavan yes okay thank you saira all great devotees for which whomever swami has lifted as example tried to practice this or they became that they didn't try they they were that yes yeah, this this path you can explain that you you, you must go and experience experience it that that's only thing i can say thank you sir brother sairam you are saying this is as a path a micro path or it's a right. it's a way of stepping up from one to another see sairam brother sir it can be you can consider it a stage also yes it is definitely a stage Okay, okay but thank you. Is, uh, but Swami is calling it the path because uh, even if you go on the path of tamasic path, one day you have to take the sattvic path. But generally, 
from tamasika path you have to go on to the rajasika path from there you can progress to sat uh, ultimately everyone has to take the sattvic path because that is the goal okay thank you that is the goal, is the goal also you see uh, so i think that's my understanding but i uh, others also can please weigh in or share your thoughts brother time is up i think and the next time the you know there's a sentence in the sattvic path um one is fully convinced that all this is just an illusion so this line we'll discuss next okay. time yeah i think we are time is up i didn't realize the time is up yeah okay sorry maybe i just short up by five ten minutes and uh, we will close here we will continue next week with the more we talk about it the more we will get engrossed in it i guess and swami will help us all saira We'll close with the Samastha Loka and Shanti Sai. Oh, Samastha Loka, Sukhino Bhavantu. Samastha Loka, Sukhino Bhavantu. Samastha Loka, Sukhino Bhavantu. Om Shanti 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 Sai Ram Sai Ram Sai Ram Sai Ram